All right, what is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Chris Colgan, the killed unquote king of Northern Virginia real estate. Not really, but I like to call myself that. But today I want to talk about, like, if you're a beginner real estate investor or getting into real estate investing in Northern Virginia or the D.C. area, and I decided to ask my friend, Dan Lane, who's been heavily in the rental market. He has a podcast. The Dan Lane Rental Income Podcast, which is a huge podcast. Dan, what is up, my friend? Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to talk rentals. Yeah, dude. Me too. I love uh, I love talking rentals with you. So, dude, like, let's get into it. Like, let me ask you a couple questions. Um, one of the things like people have asked me a lot about, like Northern Virginia or the DC area, is like, what's the difference between like a cash flow appreciation market and like, you know what I mean, or like certain markets you might want to say, Hey, I, I want to just get cash flow off my rental or certain markets you're looking for an appreciation, like for the house to go up and you just hope the mortgage gets paid for. Right. Like how does that work? Yeah. So I guess, you know, we're all buying rental properties to make money, but it's just how you're going to make money. So some investors will buy a rental property and they want to make money with cash flow. And what that means is that you collect your rent every month. And after you pay your mortgage and any expenses, you have actual real cash left over that you can use for whatever you want. You know, you can right, right. buy dinner, buy, you know, use for your car payment, whatever you want to do. Like you've got real cash where other investors buy for appreciation. So you're buying a property and you're betting that in the future, that property is going to be worth more. And so if you bought a house, maybe 10 years ago for 300,000, that house today is probably worth 600,000. So now you've got $300,000 in equity that, that you can either sell the property and take that cash, or maybe you can do a cash out refinance and use that money to buy something else. Um, but yeah, Northern Virginia is more of a cash flow. It's more of an appreciation market. It, it's right. really difficult to find cash flow around here. So meaning, like, if I was like, "Hey, I want to get a new rental in Northern Virginia, or say even like DC or Maryland," like, I guess what the prices are so high, it's hard to make like make yeah. that like cash every month off of it. Exactly. Like the the properties are just too expensive that it's very very difficult to find something where you're going to be able to cover the mortgage with the rent and also the repairs and the expenses. Cause like there's more expenses to keep a property up than your mortgage payment. So you, you need to have some extra money in there and the, the rents are high in Northern Virginia, but they're just not high enough. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Like what's like, what's a good, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask and you're welcome for the video. I got a comment there. What do you guys think? Um, I mean like Dan, like what's a good market, like in general, like to buy a rental that I could make money off every month? Well, there's a lot of different areas uh, generally in the South and the Midwest are two really good areas to invest in like an in, Arkansas or something like that. Yeah, like <laughs> Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, yeah. um, like maybe St. Louis or Indianapolis, Kansas City, or even locally, you say in Baltimore. Baltimore right. has really cheap properties. The, the thing is, like when you get to about a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the numbers start to break down. And I, I know a hundred thousand dollar house in Northern Virginia. You just get like a, a, like a small lot here with right. a house on it. Yeah. Right. right. So but you could but, go out to maybe like Front Royal or Winchester or some of those areas. Or I mean, I, guess, I know those are, those are not really that cheap, but are those good even markets? That is, even that is tough. I mean, those areas have appreciated where maybe 10 years ago you could go out to Winchester and buy a property that's going to cash flow. But th those properties have gone up a lot too. So it's not impossible, but it's, it's very, very difficult to find. Right, right. Now, I know like not to put your business out there, you own a lot of rentals, right? But so most of them are not around here then I would assume, right? Yeah, they're, they're not. But just because the numbers don't make sense. Like it's, right, right. You know, if, if I could find a property, you know, to, to give you an example, like most of my rentals, I paid about $100,000 for. So if, if I was going to buy, I, if, with say if I was going to buy five, $100,000 properties. I, I think I'm better off doing that than buying one property for 500,000. You know, because if yeah. I have properties, I'm, I'm more diversified. Right. Yeah. You're more diversified. And yeah, like you're not going to find, 
And I would imagine too, some of those areas um, as well, like people are, they're still paying higher rent. They're not paying like what they'd pay here, but you're paying a place for 125,000. They're still probably paying what a thousand a month or something. Yeah, 1,200, 1,400. You know, it's so it's like if you can buy a property for a hundred thousand dollars that you can rent for a thousand dollars a month, I think that's better than buying a property in Northern Virginia for three hundred thousand dollars that you would rent for a thousand dollars a month. Like you're you're just you're getting a better return. Yeah. Now, the trade off is that a property in Northern Virginia is probably going to appreciate better than a property in Arkansas. Yeah. So that's now, uh, that's yeah. Now Bethlehem, he's he's he commented. He's got a really good question. He was going to segue into our next part. So appreciate your question. He wants to know how about an Airbnb business in Northern Virginia, specifically in Manassas, VA. Like, what are your? I have some thoughts on that, Dan. But like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So if you're looking for cash flow in Northern Virginia, Airbnb is a good way to do it. Like, you you can make the numbers work. The trade-off is that it's a little bit more hands-on. So with my rentals, they're all long-term rentals and there's really not much work to it. You get a tenant in there, they pay the rent, you may have an occasional repair, where with Airbnb, you're running a hotel. So you've constantly got people checking in, checking out, you're dealing with cleaning. Um, but Airbnb in Northern Virginia, if, if you want to invest in a rental property, that that's I, I think one of the better strategies to go about. You, you, it's just going to take a little bit more work. Yeah, I would say too. Like especially like it's it's hard, right? Like answer your question. Like with Airbnb, it's like I would look at it and be like, all right, is Manassas really a you know like a vacation spot or a destination spot? Um, you know, somewhere like that where you could get some short term like bit corporate type people. But yeah, I think to Dan's point is. I guess the main question would be like, you're, you're eventually essentially running a hotel. So, you know, things are going to break, your house is going to get beat up, stuff like that. So it's something to definitely consider and then make sure too, if you were to buy m and is like if the HOA would even allow it, if there is an yeah. HOA, like I saw, um, I was showing a new, um, selling a new home in Jeffersonton um, in Culpeper and they actually had a rider in there that you couldn't do short-term rentals. And the mm -hmm. lady was telling me, it was a big national bill or, she was telling me they have uh, all that. Um, hey, look, Sean uh, Hart says here, he says, Dan Lane, Rental Income Podcast. Very cool to see you here. The RIP has helped me so much. Awesome. So, yeah, dude. Yeah, Dan's a legend. You know what? Like, if I wasn't friends with him, we would not have this going on here. His podcast <laughs> is huge. You know, it's one of the biggest uh, well-known uh, podcasts Um in the in the country, honestly, mm -hmm. um, like Dan, something asked me about like house hacking or renting rooms, and you were telling me you used to own a, a townhouse in Centerville that you did that. Yeah, that that was my first property. So I, I bought a house and I lived in one of the rooms, and I rented out the other two rooms, and the rent from those two rooms covered the mortgage. So I lived there free. I did this for like two years. And I ended up living there free for two years. And then the market had appreciated. So when I sold the house, I made about $100,000. So, you know, it, <laughs> it was a really great deal to live for free and then make a bunch of money. So th that is another strategy that definitely works in Northern Virginia. Yeah. Uh, you um, just have to want to live with roommates. Um, yeah. You know, where in a lot of, other parts of the country, you can buy a duplex or a fourplex and you can live in one side and rent out the other units. But just with the zoning in Northern Virginia, we don't really have many properties like that around here. Yeah. I, I think the other thing is too, is, is one thing I've seen in my career is you've got to, you got to be ready to lose some friendships when you do things like that. Like really make sure it's a legit person. I, I had someone the other day call me about selling a property. I think I was telling you about it, Dan. And, um, they let their brother move in and um, they, it was a new house and he hasn't paid a payment in two years. And she's wow. like, well, I don't want to evict my brother. And I was like, well, at some point you got to do something, you know, you, you, yep. you can't afford it anymore. So we got another question here. Um, Helen asks on our current market, is it better to rent or buy a Nova? If buying needs that I would need to sell my current house to make the down payment. 
You know, hell, I've thought on that. It's probably like personal choice, you know, like preference, like whether you want to, you know, get a bigger house, like for your family needs or whatever. Like the market has definitely softened, as you can tell, but there still is a pretty low inventory for the way the market is at the moment. Um, there's also a called a two one buy down program where you can actually get like four percent interest and then five percent interest and then it goes up to six and then whatever and then what the hope is that the market the rates have obviously shifted in the next two to three years and gone back down so that would be a personal um, choice you know um, but you could definitely shoot me a text or shoot me an email and I can f help you with that a little bit more um, Dan what do you think you know. I'm a big believer in Northern Virginia real estate, and there has never been a time, and it, if you look at it over a 10-year period of time, there's never been a time when prices have gone down and stayed down over 10 years. Sure, th there'll be periods where prices in Northern Virginia come down, but our market is so stable here with the government and with so many jobs that I, I think if you look long-term, I don't think you're going to lose buying Northern Virginia real estate. So, you know, yeah. I, I would say, Helen, if, if there's a way that you can keep your old house and maybe rent it out and buy a new house, I mean, th that might be, might be a way to go. Yeah. One other thing I would say too, is I, I saw the graph the other day and it was, um, it was from Goldman Sachs and it went back from the start of 2000 and it showed the stock market versus the real estate market. And they both kind of just like went up and down. I was going with my team with it. And I was like, you know, you think about in the last 20 years, I was like, I mean, it, we've had 9-11, two wars, the 08 collapse, COVID, um, a bunch of other things. And I'm like, it's still stayed consistently going up, you know? So it's yeah. been interesting. Now it does I mean, go down, but definitely. It goes down, down, but it always comes back. If you, yeah. you got to be patient, like you, you got to wait it out through bad times and you know real estate has gone down in northern virginia but it's always recovered and i, I think yeah. it will. i mean i don't have a crystal ball to guarantee that but i um i, I really believe that if if you can hold long term you're going to be very happy yeah i usually tell people give it don't buy unless you're going to stay there to five to seven years the market yeah. typically shifts in the stock market and in the housing market every seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, Dan, like what's like the typical expenses when owning a rental? You know, you always like, everything I always hear is like, I don't want everything to go, uh, you know, go haywire on me and it'd be screwed. Like what are some typical expenses people don't know about when they buy a rental property? So I, I think there's three categories of expenses. So th the first one is going to be just basic repairs that you're going to have a leaky faucet or a toilet that breaks or you're going to just, things are going to break in a house. Um, then you have what I call a CapEx. And this is big stuff like a roof or an HVAC mm -hmm. system, like things that, that aren't going to come up every day, but over a 20 year period, if you want a house long enough, you're going to replace the HVAC system or right. after 30 years are going to replace the roof. So you want to put some money aside because those expenses are going to come up and they're going to be big when they come up. And then the third expense that people don't think about is vacancy, that you're going to have times when you're in between tenants that you're not getting any rent, but you still have to make the mortgage payment. You're paying utilities um, that the house is still costing you money, but you don't have any money coming in. So that, so I, I think, a good strategy is just to put some money aside every month, whether you have expenses or not, put some money aside. So when stuff comes up, it's not a big deal. You can just. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to add in the chat. Um, Dan, like another good question that I get asked a lot and I wanted to pick your brain on is like, how do you find a good tenant? You know, like, I mean, like, how do you, you know, get out and like, I have some thoughts on it as a realtor here in Northern Virginia, but like, how do you find a good tenant? Like, how do you screen them for the yeah, right? I mean, place? that's a good question because if, if you have a good tenant, it is really easy owning rental properties, but if you have a bad tenant, it can be a nightmare. And I, I think it, it really comes down to treating your rentals like a business that like you were mentioning the person that didn't want to evict their brother. <laughs> You've got to evict people if they don't pay. So you, you've got to have a procedure that 
you know, for my rentals, if you don't pay rent by the fifth, we start the eviction process. And, you know, maybe they had car problems or they had some other expense. That's fine. They can pay late, but we're going to start the eviction process and we can always stop it if, if they get the money, but you know, you know, I, I can't afford to let them live. Yeah, there. I mean, I mean, not, they, I mean, typically, I say to people too, you wouldn't do this to a bank because within two or three months they're going to start foreclosing on you. And right, the sheriff, right, the sheriff's right. going to come knock on your door. Yeah, one other tip too that I found um, in my career is when you say, "Can you get me a letter of recommendation from your former landlord?" And if they don't call you back, then that's a good sign. Yeah, you know they're, what I mean, like they're not, they're not. But if they can get you that letter. And I've seen some people with really, you know, bad history or credit and life happens to people, obviously, and their landlords like this person pays on time every month, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I've taken a chance. It's worked out. But I have taken a chance where I've said on oh, rentals I've sold and I've said, oh, yeah, they'll be fine. And then every month I'm like cutting the check myself for the mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. right. We got another question here, uh, Samuel. All right. Moving to Northern Virginia, where around Fairfax can we find a house to buy? that has an accessory dwelling unit. We want to be entrepreneurial minded. What are your thoughts, Dan? Um, I don't know. I, that's probably a better question for you, Chris. I, I don't know. You know, I, I think there, my impression is that an ADU is going to be hard to find. They're out there, but they're not everywhere. Am I Am I right? Yeah, I would think so. So just to get, kind of give a better understanding of the audience, like he's looking for like a maybe what, like a detached thing or something that he can rent on the property or something like that. Yeah, like maybe a house with like, like a, like a little unit in the backyard, like a smaller house. Yeah. So what I would think, honestly, Samuel is, is, and you can email me too as well. What I would think is you're probably going to be better off finding a house with a basement that maybe has some kind of finishes and a separate entrance. That's very common. Um, you know, you, I see that a lot, especially like younger buyers will do that. Um, just keep in mind, though, like the county codes can be really strict. And a lot of these codes, you can't have like working ovens and things like that um, in there. You know, you certainly could do it yourself. But just keep in mind, if something that were to happen, you could get in trouble with that. But um, yeah, that would probably be it. But honestly, with Fairfax County, I would say anywhere that you buy would be good because they're not building any more land in Fairfax from what I can tell anymore. But yeah, it might be a little tough, but that's going to be your best bet is like a basement that's, a, that's really like laid out for that. And then you can type in like keywords when you're searching on chriscolgan.com or Zillow, or whatever, like in-law suite or, you know, type in words like Airbnb on the keyword search and that and you can find like potential Airbnb things like that. But that's probably going to be more like Fairfax, like the town or Centerville area, something like that. Yeah. The, the basement is really, I think going to be your best yeah. option. You don't have to put a stove down there. Like if you just have like a mini fridge and a microwave, you're probably going to be okay. Um, but yeah, you, you want to check with the HOA, certain HOAs, aren't going to let you rent out your basement. So you just want to check on that. Yeah. And Samuel said, yes, I was thinking a duplex for like a basement that has a, been remodeled by previous owner to accommodate a tenant. So yeah, you're not, you're probably not going to find a duplex. That's just not common in Virginia in general. Um, but the basement thing you will find a lot of, or someone had their mother live in there or, or father-in-law, you know, whatever mother-in-law living in there, God forbid, like me, I wouldn't move my mother-in-law in my house, but People will have something like that. Maybe the person passed away or they moved out. That's very common where you will uh, find a lot of that. It's definitely searchable, something we can help you with. We got another question. I like this question because, Dan, I have a lot of thoughts about it because I've owned condos in Northern Virginia. James Dean asks, are condo rentals profitable in Arlington, Vienna, and Alexandria? What do you think, Dan? In most cases, no. It's it's very difficult uh, to make money with a condo in Northern Virginia because the condo fees really kill your profit. Yes. Um, yes. They're not cheap. Like in a lot of areas and other parts of the country, you can buy a condo for 50 grand that has a small HOA fee. And if you can rent that out for $1,000 a month, you can make money. But um, in Arlington, Vienna, Alexandria... Um, unless you're buying with cash, 
I don't see how you're going to make any money. Yeah, my thoughts on this are here's your problem with condos. And actually, as and I'm do, I've been doing a ton of market research here recently. I've been putting out videos. And I shot another one today. When you look at the marketplace here, it's funny. Arlington and Alexandria and DC are a lot slower now um, compared to like Prince William, Loud, and Fairfax. Reason being is is their condo market. Um, and condos typically take a lot longer to sell. Now they're easier to rent out and a lot less maintenance. The issue with condos is like exactly what Dan said. The condo fees start to go up. Um, and then you get like that one or two management company that thinks, you know, they're uh, the president of the United States and they make your life hell, you know, and the fees and everything. The other thing too with that Arlington, Alexandria area is you got to think about um, the parking situations. And so if you get a tenant that likes to have friends over or they, they start dating somebody or kids and they park in that condo, their car starts getting towed. They're calling you every week, wondering about their car, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, like he said, if you were going to pay cash and you're like, yeah, I'm going to buy one. That pro yeah, that I probably would steer away, steer away from that. Honestly, I would steer away from any condos, to be honest with you. It's really tough. But yeah. I will say this, that if you're buying for cash flow, which is kind of what we're talking about, it's going to be tough. But if you're buying for appreciation, anything in Arlington, Vienna, Alexandria is, I think, a good investment. I don't see how you can go wrong buying yeah. in those three areas. Long yeah, time. I mean, just going into Arlington, you see like all the companies here. I've talked about this before on my channel is, I mean, the Department of Defense has pretty much said to do business with us anymore. You have to be based in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so you're having like Boeing and Raytheon and certainly Amazon, all these companies starting to move here for that reason. Um, Dan, like um, what are like the best type of properties to rent out? Is it like a single family, a townhouse? Like we just talked about condos. You know, really, you can make money with just about any type of property. For me personally, I like buying single families because like tenants tend to stay for a long time and turnover is a big expense. If a tenant moves out, you may have to paint. You're going to have some vacancy. It, it's a, it's always cost to cost me money when a tenant has moved out. So if I can get someone to stay for a long time, I'm going to be just that much more profitable. So I like buying single families in working class neighborhoods um, I like smaller houses, like about a thousand square feet. Um, the problem with bigger houses is you just, they're, they're bigger. So if you have to paint or if you have to redo the flooring, you're just dealing with more square footage. So it's going to cost you more. But when you have a thousand square foot house, it's so small that it's cheap to, to if you have to replace some carpeting or if you have to paint. So that that's really, I, I like smaller single family houses in working class neighborhoods. That That's really my secret. Thought. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, my advice too would be as someone who's I, is new to rentals, like Dan got me into it um, is, is basically, you know, like he said, look for those Midwest states where you can get a house for 125 grand. Now keep in mind, it's not going to be like Northern Virginia where the house is going to be worth 400 grand in you know, two or three years. Well, hopefully, but it's going to appreciate slowly, but you're going to make a couple hundred bucks a month and get that cash flow coming in. And I mean, like for the most of the wages around here in Northern Virginia, yeah, if you have a tenant move out on, I think the mortgage on my one that I just bought is 600 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So God forbid that tenant moves out, you know, and it's funny when you start getting that attitude, like I was looking at a new car the other day and it said payment 1500 a month. And I was like, that's three freaking rentals oh, right, in right, the Midwest right. that I could be owning right, right. now. Right. So now like I've kind of changed my attitude and been like, why would I do that? I can just buy three more rentals, have them paid off in you know, 20, 25 years and be making that cash flow every month, you know? Right. Right. Um, so Dan, like another good question that I love here, and you've really helped me out with this a lot. And is um, and if you guys we can do another call on this if you guys want, because we have a lot of different strategies, but how much cash do you need to buy a rental? You know, it it really depends. So if you're looking to buy a single family house that you're going to rent out, it's going to be a, a 20% down payment. Like that's that's pretty standard. But there's other ways to get into the property for less money. Like a lot of people will buy a property and live there for a year. And if you live there for a year and then turn it into a rental, you can do an FHA loan with three and a half percent down. 
Mm -hmm. Um, If you were in the military, you can do a VA loan and do 100% financing. And there's some other, Chris, you would probably be able to speak on this better, but there's some other 100% financing programs out there. Yeah, right? yeah. There, there's In Virginia, we have what's called a VHDA. They do make you sign an agreement saying that you'll stay there for a certain amount of time. It's not crazy, but they want to see you live there because they're, they're helping you essentially buy. You get your down payment. They're basically loaning it to you. So they probably want to see you stay there for two to yeah. three years. But that's probably one of my biggest regrets in real estate is I wish I would have... Uh, bought and then maybe stayed there for two or three years, bought another place, moved up, rented rented that one out and kept doing that. Like, you know, and I think we all strive for that huge mansion, which some reason I don't live in yet, but we all keep going there. And then, you know, you can go up, but there's definitely lender. Another thing that you can do too, is if you do currently own, you could always use a HELOC, a home equity line of credit to buy a place and then do a cash Mm -hmm. out refinance on that as well. Especially if you're buying like a a turnkey key rental that Dan likes a lot, which means what's a turnkey rental mean, Dan? That's um. So you you buy a property from a company that has bought a a rundown house, like typically a foreclosure, and they fix it up. They, they put on a new roof. They redo all the inside. So it, it's basically a brand new house. They put a tenant in there, and then they manage it for you after you close. So it's really a very easy way to buy a property from out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and the thing is too, like, remember, like I will tell you, like, really, if you're getting a rental, but even around here in Northern Virginia, I I don't do it because it's such a pain, but really vet. I, I mean, I don't do property management, but really vet the property management company. When I've seen people really inherit a property, maybe that was a rental is they never really, you know, held the property management company up to much standards to make sure they were checking on it and being like making sure the property was okay. Then the property eventually got trashed. So really vet that out, especially when you're buying out of state or something like that. Um, definitely do that as well. Yeah, I mean, property manager is like key to making this hassle free. That if if you have a good property manager, they're going to take care of all the headaches and the hassles. And th- there's really not much for you to do as the owner other than cash the check every month. Right. So that's like, for me, I, I look at my rentals as being a, a way to make passive income. So I, I don't want to know my tenants. I, I don't want to get involved with repairs. So my managers handle all of that for me. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, exactly. I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't know how to fix anything anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's good to have that buffer zone there. And some people say, well, I don't want to pay their eight to 10% fee, but to me, I'd rather just pay it and totally. Um, yeah. That's money I spend every month. Um, all right. So Sean Hart said, yeah, James, I managed a friend's condo in Bethesda, Maryland, just minutes out of DC. She paid full price for the place, but then got engaged and decided to rent it out rather than sell. Yeah. I mean, I was just telling Dan before we got on here, a friend of mine said, you know, I'm thinking about moving to South Carolina, but the rates are up. And I was like, well, what's the rate on your house? And she said 2.5% in Warrington. And I was like, I probably would never sell that house. Yeah. Why would I you? I mean, why just rent it out? I mean, 2.5%. Right. So James Dean, our friend James Dean. All right. When it comes to long-term rental versus long rental versus Airbnb, which one is more profitable based on your experience? You know, I don't know if there's enough Airbnb data out there yet um, to see like what will be better long-term. I think like to me, what would be less headache would be the long-term uh, rental avenue i think airbnb i i would say like dan what do you think what are your pro- i i would say my gut feel is that hands down airbnb is gonna net you more money it, okay. it's gonna be more work but it you're gonna make more money with an airbnb yeah and it's a trade-off and you know i had someone on the podcast recently that made um they decided they were gonna switch one of their rentals over to airbnb to make more money and he tried it out. And after he factored in the time that he spent managing the property and having to pay the utilities. So for my long-term rentals, my tenants pay the utilities, but if you do an Airbnb as the owner, you have to pay the utilities. So when he added in all those extra expenses, he wasn't really making more money. It it looked like he was, but when he actually looked at his books, 
he really wasn't. So, um, so yeah, I, I think you're going to make more money with Airbnb. Uh, yeah. But you, 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 you oh, gotta, you, you just gotta, you, you gotta also factor in the risk kind of like we mentioned earlier that the laws could change. Like you could be in an area that changes the rules on you and maybe you can't do an Airbnb anymore. Didn't so. they just, ha- I, I could be wrong. If someone knows the answer, definitely comment in the chat. Didn't that just happen in DC? Didn't they change the laws in DC and you got to live there or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you like, uh, James, I have some thoughts on the Airbnb thing around here. Cause I've looked into it for myself and I, I would say the number one market in my opinion would be Lake Anna, Virginia. Um, now you're not going to get a lot of people renting in the winter, but you're going to get some high, high rent rents in the spring and the summer and early fall. Um, you know, especially like, so what you want to do is you want to go back and look at the history there. Of, I think there's a website called air DNA. You do have to pay for that, but, uh, you can look back and see what people have been charging. Um, Lake Anna, Virginia is a good one. I would also say, I hear a lot about Shenandoah, Linden, um, mm-hmm. the places where the wineries are or like, um, uh, stuff like that are really popular. My biggest issue with those markets, I think is I look at it like this, right? If I'm Airbnb in something and Shenandoah on the side of a mountain and there's an issue on a Saturday night at 2 AM, I don't know how easy you can get a repair guy out there. Right. You know, right. and I don't know how easy it is with an Airbnb to get, um, cleaning crew out there, you know, every week. So, that's the one thing I would say, but I have heard through different Airbnb investors when they go through numbers, um, that part of Virginia comes up often as like one of the better markets for an yeah, Airbnb. I think it's yeah. one of the top areas in the whole country. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I would be like Front Royal, Linden, um, Luray, those type of areas. They're going to be like cabins. Like You want to make it unique and you just got to keep up with the times. You, know? you got to make sure the style of it looks good. And the other day, someone followed me on Instagram and their thing said they're an Airbnb interior decorator based in Northern Virginia. So I was like, all right, well, look, pe- people got money to pay for right, interior decorators right, right. through their Airbnbs. You know, I, I think the big risk with Airbnb is that when the economy starts to get worse, people may go on vacation less. So, you, you know, where people always need a place to live. So with a long-term rental, you, you're you always going to have a tenant, but with a vacation rental, people may, may cut that. So that's just something to keep in mind. I, I don't know if that's a reason not to, yeah, go, yeah. it's just something to be aware of. The other thing too, that I've kind of heard a lot and I've experienced myself, I went to Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and it was funny. Me and Dan, <laughs> one of the things we always talk about is our Marriott rewards. And I stayed at a Marriott and it wasn't even a Marriott. It was one, one of their brands, but it was basically like staying at an Airbnb, this hotel, like the the bartender was the one who checked me in. They had a band and like everything and it had this industrial feel. And I feel like um, the hotels are really adjusting quick to try to mm-hmm. capture back that business. Yep. So definitely think about that. Dan, is there like a bad time to get into rentals? Like, is there like a time, you know, like you always hear like your grandfather or somebody say, I wish I would have done that, you know, but is there a bad time to get into it? I, I don't think there is. Uh, the way I look at it is, I'm always a little bit paranoid short term. I, I'm always like factoring in the worst case that, you know, maybe if the economy dips or interest rates continue to go up, um, I, I'm always a little bit paranoid in the short term, but long term, I'm very optimistic. I, I think if you look over a long period of time, real estate prices are only going to go up, rents are only going to go up. So I, I'm very optimistic long term, but I'm very paranoid in the short term. So I, I think if you go into it with that attitude, I, I don't think you're going to lose buying a rental property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing I'll say, too, is especially during the pandemic, you just didn't mm. see around here, especially we just didn't see the massive amounts of homes being built like they did in Texas and Florida and all that. We just didn't really have that around here. Um, and I think like we're definitely going to be in for a housing shortage in this area um, for sure. You know, now, again, we're just telling you, but like the rental market too, people always need to rent. And what Dan was saying, like when you get into some of those areas like Arkansas or, you know, Louisiana, Tennessee, like look, I would say like look for communities, Dan, right, that have like, you know, a big factory around them, like, you mm-hmm. know, a Ford factory or a UPS factory like Memphis has something like that. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's all about employment. If there's jobs, there's going to be people. So yeah, you, yeah. you want to definitely make sure you have an area with a, a stable workforce. Yeah. So I guess, you know, as we wrap this up, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to ask, but it seems like Northern Virginia is good. If you just want the appreciation factor, you're cool with maybe just breaking even, maybe even losing a little bit of money on the rent, but the, the appreciation factor, but it's probably not the best market to make cash flow every month. Am I right there? Absolutely. Yeah. Northern Virginia is not a cash flow market, but you know, if you really want cash flow and you want to stay local, you know, check out Baltimore. You know, that's just right up the road. And there are plenty of properties in Baltimore where you can make cash flow. You just got to make sure you really understand the area. They have a joke mm -hmm. in Baltimore that if you have a property that you can't sell, just raise the price and find a Northern Virginia buyer and you oh. sell the property. So, yeah, you hear that? People from Northern Virginia are a bunch of suckers. I guess right, right. Like. The other thing I'll tell you too, really quick before we end, is when you look into those markets like DC or Baltimore, make sure you know the laws too, because there could be some weird law that the person can't be evicted for a certain amount of time. And there's certain people that really know how to finagle the system. So just make sure that's probably where a good property manager would come in yeah. as well. Absolutely. Well, Dan, where can we listen to your podcast at? Yeah. So the show is called Rental Income Podcast, and we interview just regular, ordinary, everyday people that are buying rental properties, creating passive income. You can find it on YouTube, um, Spotify, Spotify um, Apple Podcasts, pretty much any podcast app. Just type in Rental Income Podcast and it'll come right up. Yeah, we actually did one. I, I did an interview with Dan um, on there because I use my HELOC to... Uh to buy a rental property. And then um, a lender that Dan recommends called uh, Chaley Ridge, we can get you her info. She actually helped me get my money back and do it like, a, and so I can buy another one. So he gives plenty of good tips on there. Yeah. So, well, I thank you guys a lot for watching my YouTube live channel. Definitely check out Dan's podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit me up if you have any real estate questions. Dan, thanks so much, my man. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Talk to you later, guys.